During the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, a ship's chaplain walked along a line of sailors, passing ammunition to the gunners and giving them encouragement under fire. He said, praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. This became a Navy legend and led to a popular patriotic song of the time. The events of that day thrust the United States into World War II. The sleeping giant of America that had languished during the Depression years of the 30s now answered that call with an unprecedented sense of patriotism, purpose, and the belief in a noble cause. Americans listened to the sounds of Glenn Miller and Tommy Dorsey's music and followed every word of war news. American manufacturing went into high gear and converted almost totally to the production of war material. In 1943, the U.S. Navy ordered three new warships to be built. The USS Des Moines, the USS Newport News, and the last of which was the USS Salem. Welcome to the USS Salem, nicknamed the Sea Witch. Decommissioned after a relatively short 10 years in service in the U.S. Navy, she was then retired to the Atlantic Reserve Fleet, also known as the Mothball Fleet, at the Philadelphia Naval Shipyard. She sat there rotting for decades away in the elements. However, in October 1994, she was returned to her home here at the Four River Shipyard in Quincy, Massachusetts. The USS Salem was ordered on June 14, 1943, and built by the Bethlehem Steel Company at the Four River Shipyard in Quincy, Massachusetts. The keel was laid down on July 4, 1945, and she sailed on March 25, 1947. The vessel was formally commissioned on January 30, 1949, with hull symbol CA-139. At the time the mighty ship began service, it was state-of-the-art in communications, radar, and armament. She was sleek and visually stunning. She was 717 feet, bow to stern, with a beam of 77 feet. She completed her shakedown cruising in Caribbean waters in October of 1949 and returned to Cuba twice before the end of the year. She joined the Atlantic Fleet at the turn of the decade before entering the Mediterranean, where she became known as the Pride of the Sixth Fleet. Beyond friendly port stops, NATO exercises, and training endeavors, the warship was used for humanitarian operations. In 1953, along with ships from several other countries, she responded to the Ionian Islands of Greece as medical aid for earthquake victims. She was active in the Mediterranean Sea during the Suez Crisis, October to November of 1956. She was stationed off the Lebanese coast as a deterrent during the Lebanon Crisis, July to October of 1958. However, the ship was ironically destined to be obsolete in 10 years time. As the Cold War enveloped the United States and Russia, President Eisenhower said he was forced to learn a new language of war, the Atomic War. The soul of a ship is just as hard to describe as the smell of a ship, but just as palpable. The gray smell, as some Navy veterans call it, the rust of metal in salt water, old paint, aged wiring, and perhaps memories. The gray smell lives in the gray zone where the ship's ghosts are. The boilers that once gave power to the ship are cold now. The telephones and PA are silent. 
where so many men once occupied the passageways and compartments, there is emptiness and silence. How many human breaths were taken here, and how many exhalations breathed life into the ship, and do they linger? At what point does a lifeless thing made of steel become referred to as her or she? This human quality given to an inhuman thing. The USS Salem was named for the nearby city of Salem, Massachusetts, known throughout the region as the Witch City. Today, a popular tourist attraction where visitors stroll the historic district and delight to the street performers and historical reenactors. Salem is also home to a large number of self-proclaimed psychics and witches who practice their trade in the many shops dealing in all things occult and selling potions, amulets, and souvenirs. But Salem also harbors a dark past and the strangeness of the place lingers even today. As the sun goes down, the streets become a place of mystery and shadows. It is very easy to imagine the Puritans of the past shuttered in their homes with only the light of fireplaces and candles to keep the darkness and the devil at bay. It was in 1692 that Salem fell victim to the infamous witch trials. Fueled by religious fervor and superstition, a mass hysteria took hold of the residents, and before it was over, 20 people, mostly women, were hanged on Gallows Hill for practicing witchcraft. Today, there are those in the city who say that the spirits of those victims still linger. It is from this colorful and dark past that the USS Salem was given the nickname, the Sea Witch. To give you some backstory on the USS Salem, uh, it had a lot of tragedy, even though it never saw combat. So back in 1953, there, it served as a, a triage vessel during the Ionian earthquake. And the Ionian earthquake had dozens of people who came on board. Some of them may have died on board. So there was a lot of death, even though it never saw combat. There was also a situation that happened in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Uh, there was a gentleman, or maybe more than one gentleman, who was burned to the point where he died. And that left a psychic imprint on this vessel. Now you have hundreds of sailors who were on board the USS Salem for many years. They loved that ship. And I feel like that those sailors left a psychic imprint on the vessel in addition to the tragedy that the USS Salem saw not being in combat. All right, the first time I visited the USS Salem, I was asked to work on, a, on what was known as Ghost Ship Harbor. It was a haunted attraction on this haunted vessel. I had gone on the USS Salem prior and featured it in my book, 13 Most Haunted in Massachusetts. Now, after that first visit to the USS Salem, I went down to the birthing area. That is where the bodies were kept. And beneath me was also known as the butter room. The butter room served as a morgue or a temporary morgue for the victims from the Ionian earthquake. Within the first few minutes of walking downstairs into the birthing area, which is B-E-R-T-H-I-N-G, I saw a ghost child. Now the ghost child was hiding in the corner. It wanted me to, uh, I guess, kind of curious why I was there. And I looked at the child and the child kind of came at me and then it disappeared. Now, while this was happening, the stairs going down to the birthing area started shaking as if someone was walking down the stairs. I knew right then and there that the USS Salem is probably one of the most haunted locations in New England, <clears throat> possibly in the country. So uh, aboard the ship, the vast, vast majority uh, of entities are intelligent. You know, they're very interactive. There are, however, two residuals aboard the ship, one of which is a sailor who walks by the door to the CPO mess on a regular basis. He walks the same way, forward to aft. 
He never turns and looks. You could yell when he walks by, and he would never acknowledge you. He just walks by. He's been known to walk by a couple of times in pretty rapid succession, but again, always forward to aft, never the other way. Hi, I'm Pat Connors. I'm with the Greater Boston Paranormal. And I want to tell you a story about a ghost dog that was on the USS Salem in October. And the night in particular, we just happened to be investigating inside the barber shop. I believe there were four investigators and we we're doing EVPs, EVP uh, work and K2 work, and I had the spirit box actually right up on, the, on this counter here. I heard Carrie say something uh, like, oh my God, and I turned around and she had a look of shock in her face and she was staring right outside that doorway. And she said, that's it. And she took off running and went through the door and went down the hall and I couldn't understand what happened but I know whatever did happen really shocked her um, and a few minutes later she came back and she said I saw it I said what did you see and she said I saw the dog so she described what happened is that while I was doing the spirit box she was standing there looking outside the door and she saw a shadow figure moving along the bottom of the doorway and she said it was in the shape of a dog. It stopped in front of the doorway, turned its head and she could see its ears pointed up. It probably looked like a, a, a black, I think she described it as a black shepherd looking dog. It looked straight in here, looked right at her, turned its head and went down the hall. And that's when she said, oh my God, ran out the door and ran down the hallway. So we're gonna go back to my first investigation ever, which was aboard this ship. And uh, I had been told that back here, there was a sailor who was angry who had a tendency to be aggressive towards guests that were back here. So I came back here alone. Someone foolishly left me to my own devices and coming back here and looking around, uh, I basically announced to the room that this guy was supposed to be some kind of a badass and that I was a sailor too and that I was a bigger badass than he ever was, whether he was dead, alive, or somewhere in the middle. And if he had something, he ought to just bring it on because I was standing here waiting for it. And nothing happened. Nothing at all happened. If I remember correctly, nothing happened at all that whole, that whole night. So <clears throat> fast forward about two years. Uh, I've been on the ship, I can't say how many times by that point, and I'm now occasionally guiding groups who spend the night on the ship to investigate. And on this particular night, it was a pretty large group, but I happened to be back here in the third mess area that I discussed a little while ago. And there was uh, an investigator by the name of Kelly who also happened to be a psychic, um, an extremely sensitive psychic. And she was back here at the same time. And we were kind of waiting, you know, as you do, nothing was really, nothing was really going on. And at some point, my back, and, and I, I guess I have, to, I have to digress for a second and say that this was the summertime. And if you've never been on the ship in the summertime, uh, the only way I can explain it is it's a big steel box in the sun. Um, so it's incredibly hot on the ship. And at this point, my back was as cold as I've ever felt it. I mean, literally freezing. 
And at just about that same time, Kelly announced he's here. He's definitely here now. And she said, and he's right behind you, Don. He's here. He's right behind you. And he's laughing at us. He thinks we're the funniest things we, he's ever seen. Except you. He doesn't like you. Me? Based on my experience on the USS Salem, there are multiple spirits on board. Now, one of the bigger issues when it comes to the USS Salem is you can't do any cleansing on there because you can't have any fire. So we can't do like say staging or whatever. So a lot of the spirits are kind of, I would say stuck on that vessel. Um, I encountered a child spirit when I first walked on the USS Salem. I had an experience with what we call uh, paranormal darts. And it's some, a name that we came up with as a group uh, where there's a shadow figure kind of coming at us and then that shadow figure disperses into little pieces and those pieces come at us like darts. So we call them paranormal darts. Now, when I went back to the USS Salem recently, uh, I saw multiple shadow figures dart by throughout the vessel. Um, was that a former sailor? Uh, possibly. I have heard many accounts of people saying that there are sailors still on board the vessel. Uh, there is a ghost dog, and if you spend a lot of time on the USS Salem, you actually experience this ghost dog, and it's a growl type dog. Uh, that's on the vessel. Uh, there is a female. Um, I was doing an interview on the USS Salem when I first started working on the USS Salem and we were there and I heard what sounded like a female scream come from the medical area. Uh, and she was, she was screaming bloody murder. And what was it? I think maybe it's one of the females that were giving birth during the Ionian earthquake. Uh, we have at least a dozen women, because of the trauma who were pregnant, were brought onto the USS Salem and they gave birth on the USS Salem. So it served as an impromptu uh, spot for women to have children. When it comes to the spirit of the USS Salem, I think with, without a doubt, there's definitely a soul to the USS Salem. So we had just came in here to sit down and do an investigation um, and it was completely dark in here. I was sitting across from Dawn at the table and then uh, you know we had our gear and we sort of sat down turned the recorders on and just started asking typical questions that we ask in an investigation. And probably about 30 minutes into not a lot going on um, we heard footsteps coming up the hallway that was behind me at the time and um, we were waiting for somebody to come into the room because the footsteps were so heavy and so I turned around to look and basically uh, what I saw was a full body figure walk from left to right in the door frame and they were fully dressed, they looked like a regular person, um, but Dawn actually saw something completely different. Um, and I don't know if you want to explain that part a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, as Amanda saw this figure walk by the door, what I saw was a figure that was, I think, different than what she saw because what I saw was was all black, like a sh more like a shadow than a, what you would call a full body apparition, I guess. And 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 it stepped into the door and stood against the wall, like under the exit sign. This is the wall across from the dentist. We both got up immediately and, and chased it to see if we could see what it was. And uh, we met, so Don went out one door and I went out the other door and we met in the middle and, and there was nothing there. So. You can't, just to, you know, where we are in the ship, when Amanda goes out one door and I go out another door, as you walk forward, Obviously, being a ship, it goes to a point in the bow, and 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 you know there's nowhere to go from where we went unless you go up a ladder, and the ladders are pretty loud, so it was pretty clear nobody went up the ladder. 
And our thinking was that if there was somebody out there, there was no way they were going to get away from us. But they, yeah, there was nobody up there. Hi, I'm Eva Nagke, and I'm with the Greater Boston Paranormal Associates. Yes, I had a captain whisper in my ear, and at the time I didn't realize it was a spirit. I thought it was the two women sitting on the couch where we were investigating with a small group. Um, and I had stopped and asked them, is everything okay? And they just looked at me inquisitively, and they said, oh no, it wasn't us that had spoken. But the woman that was leaning against the wall had said, no, I, I did hear something. I heard somebody behind you. And that's where Pat Connors had mentioned that, you know, funny you should say that, but Don has an EVP recording of the captain complaining about his legs. And at the time I had no idea about the story because I was brand new to the team and brand new to the show. So that gave it validation for me. Um, and recently, the last five times I've been on the ship, the ramp, the gangway, to get up to the ship has been very active in terms of a lot of banging, a lot of noises, and it's not, it's nothing hitting the ship. It's the ropes, the chains are in place. It's a matter of you can tell there's a weight on the ramp when you see the wood bending. Um, we've also had phantom footsteps in the in one of the rooms in the deck where you could hear the running and then a pause and stops and then it started up again. Yes, I believe the USS Salem ship definitely has a soul. Um, with my experience of investigating the ship and being part of Dawn's team, I've definitely seen the ship come alive based on the spirits of the men and women that have been aboard. These events happened in October of 2018. It was me, Pat Connors, and Don Cristofaro, and Riley Black, investigated for Greater Boston Paranormal. We were on the USS Salem, down below the decks, at the operating room, which is probably one of the more active areas of the ship. And I believe we were the only people on board at the time and we couldn't figure out how to get into the operating room because it was all blocked off. We wanted to get in there and maybe do some EVP work. So while Riley was thinking about it, she said that she heard a little girl and she said, I remember you. Later on, she reviewed that uh, bit and her EVP and she heard come play with me from a little girl. And so later, uh, we, we, we kept on trying to figure out how to get into the, to the operating room. And Don was thinking, how are they gonna get in, into the operating room? And just as he was thinking that, Riley heard something on her EVP. So she reviewed it and she heard a little girl say, in a, a very fast voice, how would you get there? How would you get there? How would you get there? So uh, the Salem came in here on a Sunday, and there was another ship here called the Southern Cross. And that was the pair opposite the original pair. Well, they had to move the Southern Cross over to the other pair and move the Salem back to where the Southern Cross was. And uh, nobody was allowed on it that first week. But the next weekend I come down on it, on the Saturday, I'm pretty sure they brought it in on a Sunday. And I walked up on the deck and the grass was this high. Mm -hmm. All along the main deck with the, with the teakers. And uh, they put us to work mostly down below deck here, cleaning, w wiping the walls down and things like that and so forth and so on. Uh, we finally got it ship shape. When we first started here, we had a, a workforce of easy 50 guys, I would say, am I right? Oh, easy. Easy 50 Whoa. guys. <laughs> we had lifts up on the main deck and on the pier and everything else. Uh, Jim Sheets was the mayor and he could get anything done uh, that he needed at the time. 
gradually we worked our way through and I got the scout program in around 2002, I believe. We, is that when we started that, about 2002? Oh, yeah. I think so, yeah. And the, the scout program developed into a very good program. We had uh, boys and girl scouts staying on the ship at the time. And we'd give them tours and stay on the night with them. Huh? Separate compartments. Separate compartments, yeah. We, sometimes with the girls, we used to put up curtains so that the boys couldn't sneak around and be looking at the girls and so forth and so on, yeah. I've come aboard this ship, 56. I had been on board another ship in a Marine detachment. And I was on board the USS Antietam, which was an um, aircraft carrier. And it's long gone now. Razor blades, I suppose. And, um, I was on that for a while, and we got transferred to this ship uh, because it was going overseas for a couple of years. Uh, and I still had the time to do in sea duty. And uh, so they transferred five of us onto this ship to go over in the mid to, to, for a couple of years. And that wasn't too hard to take either. And uh, being 18, 19 years old, it, was, it wasn't too bad living on the Riviera. And, uh, but being on this ship was a good, we had a lot of, a lot of good times. Um, seen, seen a lot of bad stuff, some bad things too that went on. Uh, we thought we were going to get involved in the, uh, the Suez Canal in 56, 57. But um, we went down there to, to uh, help take civilians out of uh, Alexandria region. And um, we were going to put the Marines on the shore from this ship and another ship uh, to act as a rear guard. Uh, but when we got there, we all set to go ashore, uh, they uh, said no. Um, the president at the time, President Eisenhower, turned around and said, we're not getting involved in any more of your wars. And that was it. So all we did was sail around after. Um, Alexandria, Egypt, off the Suez Canal, and watch the firefights and everything. That's like having a 50 cent seat at the Super Bowl. We uh, stayed there for around a month or so, a month and a half. And, and then uh, that was it. But uh, did a lot of cruising around in the Med, visited a lot of countries. And I'll always remember this is a good ship, good crew. And now. Uh, I'll never forget it. Over the years that the Salem has been open to the public, many people have experienced strange things happening. On more than one occasion, chairs have mysteriously moved on their own. Numerous people have witnessed the apparition of a sailor walking the passageways. During the filming of this show, our crew had their own encounters. One of our camera operators was filming B-roll on the bridge when he was startled by a loud bang behind him. No one else was anywhere in the area. Was it the spirit of the helmsman going about his daily routine? We have observed strange mists floating across the corridors. One crew member saw a shadow figure pass in front of him. We have all heard phantom footsteps where nobody was present. From the sights to the sounds to the gray smell, the crew of the USS Salem has showed us today that this ship absolutely does have a soul. And if you'd like to come down and check it out for yourself, visit the United States Ship of the Museum here in Quincy and see if you believe that it's actually haunted. The USS Salem has appeared in a number of reality TV shows over the years, sometimes portrayed as having a dark, even demonic entity associated. The reality is the spirits of the USS Salem are just the souls of all the men, 
women and children who were touched by this mighty ship. The tragedy that she was associated with lingers in the passageways, on the decks, and in the living quarters. Memories, smells, feelings all combined to leave an imprint in the cold metal and in the stale air of an otherwise empty ship. On a cold, misty night, you can stand on the deck and feel the presence of those who served and those who perished. You can feel the soul of the sea witch.